Thanks for coming by to find out about phenomenology. Enjoy my drawings. German philosopher Edmund Herschel was one of the first phenomenological philosophers. He felt that experience should be examined in the way that it occurs and in its own terms. Today, phenomenology is a research methodology that is often used in social and health sciences, like nursing. It is generally described as a philosophical approach to the study of experience because everything that we see, we also experience, phenomenology can be applied to everything, even, say, a beer mug, which is how French sociologist Richard Aron exposed Jean-Paul Sartre to this method one night in Paris, forever changing his life, or so the story goes. Now, while the beer mug example make it, make it sound like just about anything can be phenomenology, and indeed I think Herschel was said to have made that claim, according to Creswell, a phenomenological approach is best suited to understanding several individuals' common or shared experiences to a phenomenon. The term lived experience is sometimes applied since lived experiences are those that reveal the immediate pre-reflective consciousness one has regarding events in which one has participated. Okay, there are two major variations of phenomenology, the interpretive or hermeneutic style and the descriptive style. In the interpretive style, the researcher attends to the descriptions of the phenomenon given by the subjects but then transposes their own insights, resulting in a text or a story about the phenomena. In a descriptive phenomenology, the researcher attends to the descriptions as before, but goes through a rigorous process of dissecting the descriptions to discover the essential meanings and interrelationships. Bracketing, or ensuring that the researcher's preconceptions and theoretical impositions do not influence this analysis, is a critical piece of descriptive phenomenology. Once the researcher identifies the phenomena of interest to be studied and has formulated the research question, they need to collect data. The most common data collection method used in phenomenology is the in-depth interview of participants. However, observation, journals, art, poetry, music, drama, film, novels, tape conversations, and formally written responses are all possibilities. The number of participants in a study is dependent on what the researcher thinks will lend insight into the phenomenon. One can even use a technique called the snowball, where the researcher adds participants until the needed data requirements are met. The questions asked of participants are a critical part of any phenomenological study. The researcher should carefully word each question to ensure it is as open as possible. Questions should never assume anything about the subject's experience, lead them toward an answer, or be closed in any way. Moustakas lists two essential questions. One, what have you experienced in terms of the phenomenon? And two, what context or situations have typically influenced or affected your experiences of the phenomenon? It's critical that the researcher assume a stance of dialogical openness, meaning the researcher is ready to allow the participant to speak and the researcher is ready to listen. The setting of the interview should be carefully selected to ensure comfort. In-person interviews allow for observable nuances of the participant's experience to be recorded as well. Once an interview has taken place, a transcript is made and the entire interview should be read to first get a global sense of the whole.
If one is conducting descriptive phenomenology, the next step is to read the interview and to highlight and divide statements into meaningful units or significant statements. Those units are then integrated based on similarities or grouped by themes and the researcher develops clusters of meaning. These meaning units are then subjected to a process called free imaginative variation to determine which of them is essential for and constitutive of a fixed identity for the phenomenon under study. The idea is to subject an experience to every variation imaginable so that one can see how far it can be stretched before it loses identity. In doing so, meanings that are not necessary to the identity of the phenomenon can be eliminated. Lastly, the researcher gives an elaboration of the findings by writing a description that presents the essence and structure of the phenomenon. And there you have it. Phenomenology.